As they left Bethany the next day, they arrived at Jerusalem. Immediately on entering the temple, Jesus started throwing out everyone who had set up shop there, buying and selling. He kicked over the tables of the bankers and the stalls of the pigeon merchants. He didn't let anyone even carry a basket through the temple. And then he taught them, quoting this text. My house was designated a house of prayer for the nations. You've turned it into a hangout for thieves. The high priests and religious scholars heard what was going on and plotted how they might get rid of him. They panicked, for the entire crowd was carried away by his teaching. There is, to me, something quite appealing in the way Jesus makes such a statement by overturning the tables. The picture is one of utter chaos within the temple, money flying about, and more than likely people scrambling to pick some up. Caged animals freed and seeking survival, and probably a way out of the building. Those who were in charge seeing their position and power threatened, and Jesus' actions become a statement about religion. There is a part of me that would like to follow in these footsteps. I've always fancied the idea of going to the next church fair and throw the tables over, see the money flying and declare something as profoundly simple as Jesus did. You have turned this house into a hangout for thieves. We seem to be able to cope with Jesus' actions when we interpret them as dealing with the corruption associated with the money changers. But what if it was something more, something deeper, something that was corrupt at its very heart? Throughout these stories about Jesus' life, we see Jesus rallying against a system that was intended to enable people like you and me to access the divine, to enter God's presence without fear, and discovering for ourselves the grace which says, you are okay, you have a place, you can start again with a clean slate, you belong, you are worthy of God's love, but instead, people lived with a system which made powerful leaders hold on to their power by oppressing the people with added burdens, controlling with fear, the fear of banishment and abandonment, a living hell where one is outside God's presence. The only way to keep hope alive was by following unachievable rules, and if you achieved it, it may enable an awakening on the last day. So those who broke the rules such as the woman caught in adultery, or the people whose illnesses were attributed to sin, the questioning of whether the Sabbath is a day for doing good. These people undermined the hope of Israel, according to those in power. But Jesus saw the opposite, that hope was birthed by those who had found for themselves this new grace and discovered their place in God's kingdom. This attitude of Jesus undermined how things are and was cause for concern. For Jesus, religion was more than just some eschatological hope for the end days, but it was about the here and now, what people go through, what they endure, what they suffer. Jesus is not showing some far off, remote God and a system which keeps people downtrodden, but sees the God he calls Father offering a transformative love that leads to a new way of living and understanding of life and relationships, not in some distant future, but here and now. This is God's new world. This was beginning because Jesus' time was getting short. Jesus was encouraging his followers to seek out that which gives life. And in the gospel stories, that was Jesus himself. So this story, of the overturning of the tables, of the undermining of power, of the questioning of where you belong. This story stands and shows Jesus standing with those who stand for freedom. This is Extinction Rebellion taking on our passivity on climate change. This is the woman at Creamland Common in the 90s taking on nuclear weapons. 
This is the Occupy London camp outside St Paul's Cathedral. This is the people who see lives matter and topple a statue. This is all the people who have seen something wrong and done something about it. No wonder the people in charge are plotting to take Jesus out. Let us pray. Loving God, help us sweep away the old so that new life can touch us, not just in the places of fatigue and weariness, but in the things that are wrong, the systems that oppress and see someone as a lesser person, where the rich get richer and the poor are ignored. 
where religious people only serve themselves and ignore the plight of those around them. Loving God, overturn the tables in our hearts that keep us from you and bring us deeper into your presence that we may be sent to see how your kingdom comes. Amen.